everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the mumps. This is a requested video, so thank you to the person who requested it. This is something you will learn about in your pediatrics class as it mostly affects children. I do want to point out though, it doesn't exclusively affect children, so adults can get this as well. So let's talk about it. What is it? What causes it? What are the big issues? So it's caused by a virus, this is a viral infection, and it mostly affects your salivary glands. It is very, very contagious, easily spread through coughing, sneezing, sharing, you know, utensils, drinks, food, all of that. And it is actually something that is reportable to the CDC. So that's kind of the basic stuff you need to know about it. Who's at risk for getting this? The unvaccinated. So this could be people who are unable to get vaccines because of their health, those who choose not to, or you know, just very, very little babies who haven't gotten the full course of the MMR. So mumps is one of the M's in the MMR. So measles, mumps, rubella. Those who are in school, so like school-age children who are around other children, around other germs, and people who are in college. So you live in the dorm, you live in close quarters with other people, you're more likely to get a contagious illness. And then those who travel internationally, those are the three big risk factors. What are the signs and symptoms? The big one, okay, the classic one, is swollen salivary glands. So you will see that, okay? You will see that kind of puffy appearance in their neck. And I'll go ahead and insert a picture from the CDC so you can see an example of that. Pain, especially pain with chewing and with swallowing, okay? They can also report headaches, earaches, muscle aches. They can be tired and feel fatigued or weakened. They have fevers and they might report a loss of appetite. And that is really also more related to the pain, the pain with swallowing and chewing. So now that we know what to look out for and who's at risk, let's talk about how is this diagnosed and what can the nurse do to help these patients. When it comes to diagnostic testing, they will do a buccal or an oral swab and they will do a blood sample to check for antibodies. Since this more commonly happens in children than adults, it is recommended that school-aged children avoid school for about 10 days. So keep them out for about 10 days because remember, this is very contagious. Fortunately, this is something that parents can usually treat at home and they don't necessarily need to be hospitalized for this. If they are hospitalized, they do need to be on droplet precautions. And so what are some things the nurse is gonna do? Antipyretics to control that fever and analgesics for that pain. We're gonna offer them soft foods. Remember, it might be painful to chew, painful to swallow. They might have that loss of appetite. So encouraging them to eat soft things is gonna help them keep their energy up. Having them rest. Even something as simple as like asking them questions and having them respond, talking, that might be painful for them as well. So have them rest. Assess for complications. Now, in children, this is considered kind of a mild illness. In adults, it's a bit more serious and adults are more likely to have complications. Apply warm or cool compresses to the area for comfort. If this is a male who's had a complication, which is swelling of the testicles, Apply scrotal support if they swell because it's going to be uncomfortable and painful for them. And then while we want to encourage them to eat, we want them to avoid citrus, spicy foods, and candies because that's just going to make it worse. It's going to make it more painful. So now that we know that, let's talk about those complications and prevention. The big sign of mumps, remember from the beginning, is that swollen salivary glands, so the inflammation. So all of the complications are going to be related to inflammation, just in different parts of the body. So we kind of touched on this already, swollen testicles. This could be painful for the patient. Encephalitis, this is like swelling in the brain, right? This could be even life-threatening and deadly. Meningitis, now the swelling has affect our central nervous system. Pancreatitis, so the pancreas. And then hearing loss. This is probably the one you hear about. Ha ha ha. Is the most common complication is hearing loss. 
Now, it varies. It could be one ear, it could be both ears, it could be temporary, or it could be permanent. So it's really going to depend. But these are the complications, most of them related to swelling, inflammation. And of course, we don't want these things to happen. We don't want to get mumps in the first place. So how do we prevent it? Don't share food or drinks or utensils or cups or any of that. Cover your cough or sneeze, right? When you're sick, stay home. Or when your kids are sick, have them stay home. Don't send them to school so they can infect other children. Good hand hygiene. Clean and disinfect your area, especially if you're sick or especially if you're the parent of a sick child. Clean and disinfect that area. And of course, the most recommended thing is to get vaccinated if you are able. So the MMR vaccine, that's two doses, usually recommended before a child would even start school in the first place. And that's the best way to prevent getting the mumps. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.